Hey, for the beginning of the video, it should be as cringy as possible for my child viewers. There needs to be epic reference to everything we've done before. Oh yeah, get this. I do voice acting pretending to be that character, making the beginning even worse. This is basically how every game theory intro goes. Hello internet, welcome to Gamer Theory, where I got a juicy mix of gamer theories to go over. But before I start, I just want to plug my merch in. Do you want to be epic gamer? Buy my crap so you can give the boys a reason to continue bullying. We got things like shirts, pants, backpacks for the children, and underwear for some reason. Yeah, we also got this here puzzle so that you guys can solve it, so I can try to be unique and make this video to 10 minutes. Seriously, how the hell do you make a merch plug this long? We have more than just shirts. We got pop sockets. We got fidget spinners. Backpacks. Oh yeah, did I mention backpacks? iPhone cases. Samsung cases. Earbuds. AirPods. Gamer chairs and stickers. Not to mention, they are a limited edition. Meaning that if you don't get them in time, they'll be out of stock. Or on eBay for the highest cost you will ever imagine. Buy them now. Give me money. Merch plug over. That was painful. First off, remember that guy who said Mario is communist? Well, he's more than a communist. He's Stalin's twin brother. Let me explain. Living things do mitosis, right? So if humans do mitosis, that must mean Stalin grew big and then split into two. I could prove it to you by showing that Mario has a mustache and Stalin has a mustache. Are they related in some way? But if you look closer, you can see that Mario wears red and yellow, automatically making him anti-capitalist. Could we also mention the fact that Luigi's green, making him a filthy capitalist because green equals money? Shake my head. They both wear a cap, both making them both related to each other. So you don't believe me? Here's photo evidence that is unedited of both Stalin and Mario standing next to each other. You know Final Fantasy Freddy's, right? The game that people still talk about and care about despite its popularity in 2014? I just found out that the purple guy is actually purple and that the orange man is not purple guy. Here's how. Purple man is child murder, right? Blood is red. And tears are blue. Red plus blue equals purple. That must make him purple because children cry and wounds make you bleed. So when, when you're in pain, you cry and bleed, making this true. Purple man's color is 6F4A95. A hexadecimal close to blood is 6F0000. So if you subtract the purple color from the red color, you get 004A95, which is blue. And it closely resembles water, which tears are water. This uh, therefore proves that purple man is only purple and no other color. But how does this happen, you might ask? Well, this game does not specifically say anything about having realistic standards, since robots are possessed by ghosts and humans are possessed by robots making the game's realistic standards low. Also to prove that it could be a thing, it could be mentioned at the fact that it's just a game and shouldn't be compared to real life. Need more proof? Here's unedited evidence of Purple Man turning purple. Sonic is not a hedgehog. Here's how. Sonic is taller than hedgehog. Hedgehogs aren't blue. Sonic has two arms and two legs. Hedgehogs have four legs and no arms. So then we could say that Sonic isn't a hedgehog. But what is he exactly? So he is either a blue alien from a certain world claiming he is a hedgehog, or a fictional character. Sonic is also very depressed. You see, Sonic goes in the speed of light, right? And if you're faster than light, he can only live in darkness. So then if he's surrounded in darkness, that means he's sad. Sonic is also blue, meaning he's sad. Blue equals sadness, therefore, he is depressed. Here's more proof, as you can see, a unedited picture of Sonic crying. But hey, that's just a theory. A gamer theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs>